everybody. Welcome to Active Motion. Um, tonight we're talking about Codex. Um, I mainly got told you want to talk about deliverables. Um, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. Um, we've done a reasonable amount of research. Um, it was actually a few years ago um, when all of a sudden, you know, like so many different deliverables and so many people with different computers and DVD players and iPhones and iPods and everything else. Um, so we did a lot of research a few years ago because we knew that VHS was dying and it wasn't as easy as just sticking in a VHS and hitting record and being able to check it back and send it off and knowing it was going to be okay and look terrible. Um, so um, we did a lot of research and um, found that um, while there is a thousand and one different codecs and deliverables out there, um, there's still today only a few that's actually being used. Um, so it's probably mainly what I'm going to talk about, the few that still get used um, today and why they get used. Um, and then also go through um, the different software which we use in here and that we've tested um, and what we believe are the best software programs to use for those deliverables. Um, and also how to keep it easy when um, you know, you've got a deadline and you've suddenly you know, got a seven minute program you're used to cutting commercials and you've got to deliver an MPEG that looks like the best MPEG in the world and it's got to go via email which is only allowed to be five meg and you know, it's seven minutes long. Well, you're probably actually going to be in trouble if that's the case. Um, so anyway, what we'll do is we'll start off by going through um, the different formats. So we'll skip software at the moment. Um, and um, then we might come back to software. And I've actually got a few examples here um, just to um, sort of show the difference in quality um, of different examples. Um, we'll start off with probably the most popular format in the world um, as a deliverable, um, which is um, MPEG-1 excluding VHS, obviously. Um, MPEG-1 was one of the original codecs that was developed, um, and the reason why it's obviously um, still a popular format is pretty much any single computer from, I don't know, 1988 onwards can probably play it, I think. Um, maybe 88 might be pushing, it might be a little bit slow. But at the end of the day, it's deliverable. We still today use MPEG-1, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, because you will have clients that have PCs that aren't all that installed, something like QuickTime onto their computer or whatever, um, because they've got some IT manager that locks all the computers and they can't install their own software, and, and you get clients that simply will not be able to apply any other format apart from an MP1. Um, it's great to be able to deliver a format that they can play, it's unfortunate that MP is a 15 year old format and it actually doesn't look that great. Um, the other issue with MPEG-1 and a fair bit of software that was originally made, it was, it was originally designed as a 4.3 format and pretty much most of the stuff we do nowadays is 16.9. So all of a sudden you've got this little window with props top and bottom and you've got this little MPEG plane. Fortunately some of the software now, over the last year, has woken up to that and you can actually make a 16.9 MPEG now without the props top and bottom. Um, there is also MPEG-2, which is probably the next most common format. Um, it's often used on, um, or the most common format it's used for is DVD. Um, it got dropped um, on the new Blu-ray standard, but um, DVD is still obviously a lot more popular than Blu-ray, and there's probably not many people burning their jobs to Blu-ray yet. Um, so DVD is obviously a very popular format for deliverable. Um, the quality of it is obviously quite good. Um, the other thing that MPEG-2 um, also still gets used for a lot um, is um, like a video on demand playback system, um, you know, in shopping malls and all that sort of stuff. Um, the next format, I'll quickly skip through these and you can always come back and ask questions. The next format um, is the Windows Media format. Um, although a very good format um, as far as compression goes and the quality that you can get out of it. Um, still not a massively popular format because you've still got the compatibility um, issue of them playing it back on Mac, which you can install software. Um, so it does play in certain players, but most Mac people are pretty into their quick time. And their H.264, so they go, why am I going to install that on my computer when I can play H.264? <laughs> Um, as opposed to PC people who, if they can install QuickTime, which they usually have because they've installed iTunes, um, usually have QuickTime on their system. Um, which then brings us to the next format, which is MPEG-4. MPEG-4 comes in several flavours. Um, 
It came originally as a format called H.263, um, which is um, a step up on the actual algorithms of MP2, um, which was H.262, um, and um, was a format that was adopted by Apple very early, um, and for its file size, is a reasonable format. It has since been outdated by the next format, which hopefully is on the next page. H.264? Yeah, MP4 Part 10. Um, so, H.264 is still MP4. A lot of people get confused. Um, it can be wrapped up as many different files. It can be wrapped up as a QuickTime file called .move. It can be wrapped up as a 4V, 4V file, uh, M4V file. Um, as well, um, it's all the same compression algorithm, it just depends on what device you're playing it back on. Um, there is several um, pros and cons to all those different devices, but at the end of the day, essentially, if you, after a certain quality of a certain size, whether you're import, um, encoding it as a .move file or a M4B file, one's going to play on an iPhone, the other's going to play on your QuickTime on your computer, um, they're both going to look exactly the same because it uses the same algorithms for the actual encoding. Um, H.264, MP4, is becoming the most popular format and it's getting adopted by lots of different people, not just Apple. So you take Blu-ray, for example, it's also H.264 encoded. You take um, the new Flash that's actually coming out, so Flash video that we see on most websites nowadays, um, which was originally built around a, I'm pretty sure, a H.263 encoding standard has gone to H.264. Um, so H.264 is something that's probably going to be around for quite some time until they make H.265, I guess. Um, and then we're all going to be incompatible again with each other and ask them just an extra question when we're about to deliver a file to a client. But um, at the moment, H.264 is definitely the most efficient um, file size based compression out there. Um, there is some, I call them unknown brands, where there's you know a few freaks in some backyard that usually hack computers who are building their own compression algorithms. Um, they come up all the time, but they don't usually get adopted because obviously it's compatibility through all the systems around the world, and iPods, and Apple TVs, and Blu-rays, and all that sort of stuff. So H.264 is something that we're definitely all heading towards, um, which is a good thing, because it is a great quality for its file size. Um, it's still a bad thing in the sense that you need something like QuickTime installed on a PC to play. Um, the other thing as compression goes along is it's all great to say, yeah, H.264 looks great. Um, every time compression gets better, it actually taxes the computer more. But because computers are becoming more powerful, we don't usually notice that the problem is if you've got an old clamshell laptop Mac, it probably won't play H.264 because the processor is simply not fast enough to decode it and show it. So, that's, that's sort of the main crux of compression. As, as the software gets written better and better, they you know, use the processes harder and harder to display this more amazing looking format at a lesser file size. But there is the trade-off of, obviously, you know, computers need to be faster to actually play back um, that 